It's your buddy Peace and Harmony with you here today. We are zooming in and we are focusing in on a viewer question and situation that we got in. And that is really um, the feeling that they cannot trust themselves or anyone after being surrounded by narcissists for most of their life. And this feeling of not being able to trust is very much rooted in the lack of validation and lack of unconditional love that surrounds them in their life. If you're constantly around disapproval, intimidation, bullying, criticism, and negative validation, you're never going to get to have an experience of yourself in the absence of fear, in the absence of judgment, in the absence of condemnation, in the absence of contempt, in the absence of disdain. So life becomes a constant battle. Life becomes a constant struggle. Life becomes a constant defense mechanism that you have to explain and justify yourself, your existence, your reason for living, your purpose. Oftentimes this can separate you from really your life purpose, your destiny, and furthermore, your happiness. You constantly feel like you have to react to this projection and this narcissistic power and control sort of complex that is part of their personality and is part of a projection for their feeling inadequate, insecure, and shame-based themselves. And this feeling, which I want to address here, of not being able to trust is because oftentimes there's a lack of trust within the narcissist sphere of energy, their sphere of influence, um, how they make their way in the world, is to basically project the experience that you're the loser, I'm the winner. You know, you're the loser, you're the loser. That's just a constant projection that they have to promote in their really life saga, in their blueprint, in the story of their life, in their you know emotional landscape, in their story, in their allegory. Um, you know, if you were to look at the big picture and how they operate, there always has to be a loser. And because they feel this so deeply, and they're so shame-based that they must seek to humiliate in order to conquer. They must seek to denigrate in order to feel better about themselves. They must dim the presence of others in order to expand the light of their, themselves. So it's very much a defense reaction and a rationalization that they make within their world. So if you have been around this, you've been like a sponge, and you've absorbed this energetically and constantly and critically, you know, just for years and years and years, and it's compounded and it's created your perception of life and really become part of your mood and identity of how you view um, life and then furthermore, your life purpose. You know, life becomes a, a struggle. It becomes like you're constantly on trial. You feel like you're always living in fear and torment and what's gonna come, you know, around this, you know, the next corner. You have that uncertainty kind of part of your emotional chemistry and if you if you don't have trust in you know the people around you if that's been part of your environment um, for so long it becomes part of your perception and your perception is your mindset and that's how you look at the world and then how you look at the world is really in turn what you receive so if you have basically it's like what came first the chicken or the egg well you know, whatever it is, they, it's, it, it's sometimes what came first, which is your, your divine self, your tabula rasa, the clean slate, the love, you know, the, your, your life purpose, your, um, you know, your divine being, your core, you know, if that came first, that's what you came in with, who knows, if, you know, about p previous life experience, etc. But basically, you came out of that that love and that source, that divine source. I mean, there's, do you do you understand what I'm saying there? So if that came first and then projected onto you, with a lot of narcissistic influence, which really can pervade, you know, individuals, families, communities, and really the world at large, um, it becomes very difficult to experience that trust, which is a feeling of knowing. It's a feeling of contentment. It's a feeling of certainty and it's a feeling of faith. And faith basically allows you to bring about your dreams and really realize them and have that sort of motivation and that impetus and that momentum even though you can't see it. So it's having 
the future vision that something is going to result in ultimate goodness of what you desire and what you want, whether it's relationships, whether it's feelings, whether it's possessions, whether it's finances, um, you know, whatever it is, it's the knowing of what you want and then the faith that you c you have what it takes. So it's like the ability to see the horizon beyond the horizon or to at least constantly keep your eyes on the horizon of what it is that you want. And really that trust is that center and it's that um, really that alignment and clarity of your energy centers. And the narcissist wants to project that they're going to knock you down. They're going to dismantle you. They're going to get in, you know, where it hurts. You know, it might be your pocketbook. They might try to hit you at your pocketbook. They might try to hit you at your appearances. They might try to, you know, hit you at your empathy, you know, your humanness, uh, the fact that you're not perfect. They're going to find some little uh, crevice, some little uh, chink in the armor that they're going to try to focus in on and basically rip you apart. Or some people say rip you a new one. I've never really understood what that meant, but... They're basically trying to uh, peck at some little flaw and make that a mogul. Um, actually, make the mogul a mountain. And they're going to make that basically, you know, have you focus on your faults and have you kind of live in a feeling of fault and feeling that you're full of fault and shame and humiliation. So it's really a projection of what this person is inside. You know, you can't give what you don't have. And so the narcissist can't give love they can't give that sort of a lot of that divine presence even though it's an outer shell sometimes of, of charm and um, you know these people can be very entertaining um, but oftentimes they can't give you that sort of trust that safety that security you know it's constantly you have to prove you know prove yourself around them it's a reaction they always you know they're not open up you, you it's a presence that you can feel and so, you know, if, if you have encountered this, it's the narcissistic bullying. You know, there always has to be a game. There always has to be a winner and a loser. Um, you know, the, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to sense that. So it's almost like they're constantly keeping score. Um, it's like they're constantly trying to, you know, dance around the kitty. Um, you know, whatever the kitty might be, it might be at the pot of gold at the, at the center, whatever it is that they're trying to go after, whether it's attention um, finances to be the number one in the family, to get the inheritance. Um, you know, they, they have, there's something that they're going after. And, you know, it's very, it can be very dangerous because of the destructive element that they seem to project onto others, which oftentimes is that shame, humiliation, and embarrassment. So if you have felt this around them, it's basically because they, they you know, when they seek to dismantle you, they, they have that sense of superiority that they need, that they thrive on. And, um, you know, it, you know, why don't they ever change if it becomes such a, uh, an image that they have to prop up because they just thrive on going after the image. That is their, that's what they're focused on. That's what their blueprint is. That's their allegory. That's their story. And, um, you know, eventually it's going to cave in on them. It's going to implode. You know, eventually something is going to go poof and, um, you know, you're going to hear something about them. You're going to hear, you know, of how unhappy they are. And then the facade, you know that you were basically uh, in love with what was a facade. But, you know, I think it's oftentimes a lesson learned. That's why I talk so important um, in the recovery journal is to focus on your lesson learned and to realize it's okay to move through this relationship Oftentimes people feel that the narcissist was the panacea, the end all be all, you know, the final person that they were going to love or connect to or attach to. But, you know, if you're attached to this sort of illusion, you know, you feel this emptiness, you feel this um, rage, you feel the anger, you feel the betrayal. And oftentimes, you know, they might have taken a certain innocence from you in your life. Um, you know, not only a certain innocence, but they could have you know, taken a whole stage of you in your life. Um, you know, these formative years or whatever it is, you might have feel like they have stolen from underneath you. Yet you were an observer of it. You were, you know, you had a higher consciousness than this. So you're able to see really what went on. You're able to see more than they do. You're able to perceive from a higher level and more substantive than they do. So really, you're not the loser. Um, 
you really are, you know, not playing the game. And so really when you, you know, let that go and you realize that it's not, you know, life is not always a game. It's an inner, it's an inner life. It's an inner game. If anything, it's knowing your inner mindset and your inner goals that are so important to you and that really the one who you need to have control over is yourself that inner leverage versus giving it to, over to somebody who is more charming more eloquent um you know who you feel is the narcissist or who had charmed you or who had surrounded you in your life realizing that the lever and the power is within you and that power to perceive is really the power to help heal yourself and come through those feelings of emptiness and betrayal and rage and anger that oftentimes erupts from feeling in the presence of this loss, um, this loss of innocence or loss of uh, humanity that you see. Um, and there's a great deal of restorative powers that can become within you once you are able to accept that and let go of the, uh, I guess, the illusion that the narcissist was trying to make you the loser because, in essence, they're the ones who had really the grave loss that they were acting out of. So the feeling less than, the, the feeling insecure, the shame-based, the humiliation that they constantly had to project onto you, you know, you were a temporarily, you know, throwing block, you know, like I think, um, you know, like clay on, uh, if you've ever seen those, you know, potter's wheels, you know, they basically threw it at you, you know, throwing the tomatoes, throwing the mud, throwing the clay, but you take it into your hands and then you make it and you mold it now and sculpt your life according to your desires, your ambitions, the kind of blueprint and template that you see for yourself. So you take really, you know, the, the, uh, you know, the clay that was thrown at you and, you know, you make the foundation of something stronger. Um, you, you know, you, you don't get hurt by it. You, it actually builds you. It's a, it's a building up because you're able to learn how these people work and um, you're not then living the lie, you know, you're living in the truth, which is more powerful and really more potent than the negative fuel of their energy, which is then converted and alchemized to the positive fuel of your energy. So really, you know, that positivity, I think really resides within you. And then once you realize that you cast off the self doubt because the narcissist tries to win by flooding you with self-doubt. They, they try to hit you where it hurts, under the knees, you know, in the gut, on the face, whatever it is that they try to shame you for. And I bet every single one of you who have been trying to heal from a relationship with a narcissist have been trying to heal from some sort of shame that they projected onto you. But notice the projection and notice the reality and the positivity in the, in the fuel that you have within you and realize that, you know, you're now opting out of their game. You're now taking your inner flame and your awareness and your strength within you. And then that is something you can trust. And as long as you really focus on that, meditate on that, that that flame, that passion, that desires within you, and it doesn't go out just because you're around this person, they might try to dim it. They might try to throw water on it. They might try to make you cry. They might try to make you so unhappy that they put out that inner flame, that inner light, that inner life. But if you're still watching this, it's because that, that is flickering and you're, you're feeling that and you're trying to give it space to breathe. And I'm telling you to really get a hold of that and ignite it and realize that you're not playing the game with them anymore. You're not cast a loser. It's just the light that they're trying to put over to dim you. And really, it is your divine purpose to emerge beyond it and to really have that experience, that trust, that certainty, and that faith within you that really is kind of the test. You know, while, you know, if you, if you look at it that way, that's what they're really trying to pull out of you is to get more in touch with that. And as you do, you'll begin to hold fast and let that really illuminate your whole life. And then furthermore, you'll be able to cast them and their negativity out of your light and out of your life and furthermore have released the need to play their games and to prove them to prove them wrong you write just you know you really release a lot of that um gaminess that tends to pervade the narcissist and their type of lifestyle peace and harmony with you here today i hope these videos do help 
please share and please subscribe for more great tools, videos, discussion, and support.